the titles are, uh, he owns them outright. We as a public company. I see. We're our stockholders. And, uh, That's... Uh, Blue Boy, rather. Yeah. We, we right. I believe, is... Uh, the license for we is, uh, is held completely by uh, Mary Traub. Hmm. 100%. There are no other stockholders. So this is um, Laurent Publishing, or is it? Is there something above that? No, Laurent, uh, Laurent is a graphic house. Oh, I'm sorry. What the hell am I talking about? Laurent is doing uh, a couple of other books. Uh, they're doing uh, We Letters. Yeah, now Warner carries that too. Yeah, which is natural, of course, since they carry Wii. Right, exactly. Right. So Laurent Publishing is is the we, the we, I guess the we house. I know very little about Wii. Yeah. Uh, all the only thing I know is, is uh, my uh, my concern, which is the Blue Boy thing. Hmm. So you, so Adult Cinema is part of that group, or sin? Yeah. Oh yeah. Cinema X. Big and way. Cinema X, that's a separate magazine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is Bobby Hollander still involved, or he no, went over... No, we're doing it in-house. He was packaging it. He's no longer doing it. I see. Hmm. It's all in-house. He brought all magazines in-house. So nothing is being packaged outside. Yeah. So there's a ton of editors and a ton of our people up there running around. I don't know how the hell they control the whole goddamn thing myself. <laughs> <laughs> but they do. Well. So what do you what do you do with uh, Werner? Uh, I'm a field representative. I'm doing point of sale checkups. Uh huh. So it's a bottom line way of getting into the business, yeah, which right. is which is what I wanted. You work out in the field and check stands and Yeah. Well, that's good. Take reorders right. and uh just make sure the magazines are getting their proper proper chance to sell. Mm -hmm. It's a good start. Yeah, and and I think that the the likelihood of me moving on to something better too is is very good. Well, with Warner, it's a good hand. Yeah, within the same company. Mm -hmm. I mean, because um, I'm actually overqualified for what I'm doing, but. I wanted to get a start in that particular business because yeah. my other background is in a different business. Yeah. So Should we have, uh, because of all these separate little companies, we have Christ. We have, we must have at least seven circulation people working with us up there. Different one for each magazine. For each, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I could conceivably do something like that someday. Yeah. You know, you just work on the circulation of the magazine. Right. But Warner, you know, Warner is a real good house to get started at. It oh, beats, yeah. It beats uh, Flint. Yeah, absolutely. It beats, uh, Cable's an excellent house. Uh -huh. The only reason, the only problem with Cable is they, with uh, my type of uh, publication, they want editorial control. Really? Which I can't give them. Or I, I say I, meaning, you know, generally speaking, my publishing company can't give them. Uh, they want control on erections. They want control on uh, uh, editorial word, you know, word uh, words used within editorial. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you, we just couldn't do it. You know, it's, it doesn't sell the book. Even though they're a real good house to be with, because they, uh, well, they got the, uh, you know, they have the wholesalers, they have the credibility. Yeah, yeah. Strange but, call from you, my God. Well, <laughs> I like to. Uh, what's strange about it? the fact that it's on Sunday, or no? It just, you know, it's just nice to talk to you. It's all I like. Yeah. I like talking business. It's, it's, uh, I love publishing. Oh, I love the business when very I much. Somebody yeah. that, like myself, that's into many different other areas, all of a sudden knows so much about something that, you know, my heart thrives on. It just. Uh, it you surprised know, you. It surprised you, right? Yes. You get a rush, you know. It's yeah. Good. 
<clears throat> well, I'm gives you insight to other, you know, to other people and what's going on in the world within your business and. Uh... Right, I, I'm kind of. I think I'm kind of rare in that respect. In other words, most porn actors or models or whatever the case might be are pretty removed from the, that end of the business. Yeah, they don't know. They don't know yeah. anything about it. No, but I'm reporting to. As a result, uh, they're ripped off. It's, what? Uh, as a result, they're completely ripped off all the yeah. time. So knowing what you know, it's a real good, a real good way to. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I really like it. I see. I also thought about uh, production, film production, right. film in, but mm, too much pounding on the pavement for film production and film distributing is, is too much uh, one man or two man partnerships where there's not much opportunity for someone to hire me to do something yeah. so unless you go into in business in what respect as, as, as a uh, as a as a actor or as a director or what I mean in terms of going into the business let's say see I've gotten into the magazine distributing business now let's say I wanted to go into the film distributing business which I thought of right most most film dis distribution companies are simply bookers consisting of one or two people, and that's it. They don't uh, have a field force that they've hired. Well, I suppose I suppose the major studios do, but the independent film producers they've got their uh, distributors. You know, they work on the basis of partnerships. Yeah, they got their own little their own little trip. Who does? Um, uh Who's doing Blue Boy, uh, uh, Playboy's cable work? Playboy's cable work? Yeah, they, well, they have a whole cable system now. Um, yeah, you know, I had wanted to bring Blue Boy to uh, to cable and to talk to you know some producers and it is it's tight knit. There's just a very few people that control the, the whole situation and. Uh, yeah, well, what I meant is, in terms of me being hired as an employee, the opportunities didn't seem to be as good. Most people who get into the business go into it as a partner, or, or they get into the business themselves. Yeah, right, exactly. Whereas this, working for Warner, there's a chance for me to be strictly an employee from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, something they've hired me to do, and I'm on salary. Yeah, and it's a good, you know, like I said, they, they have tremendous credibility. Um, yeah, I think I actually I think they're one of the best distributors. Even though the books that they're putting out there, well, they call them the sophisticates, but uh, those books alone have tremendous credibility. You know, they're not sleaze books, and from there you can go to any publishing or any uh, distribution house. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And push, you know, the straight stuff. You know, right. Like, uh, uh, oh hell! Um, like Cherry Magazine does, uh, you know. Uh, right now they have, I think they, uh, they were negotiating for Red Book and about three other real straight titles. Who was? Uh, Cherry Magazine. They were Callahan over at. Um, the fuck is the name of his company? His company McFadden. McFadden uh -huh. Publishing. Yeah. And. Uh, I think Red Book had been taken up by somebody else, but I think they're still working on two other titles. Yeah, I heard about that. I forgot who uh, took them up. I think uh, Hearst, I think, but I'm not Hearst. sure. You're right. I'm yeah, sure Hearst. Hearst. Yeah. Right. Hmm. So it's, uh, it's good that you're into that. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you think about, uh, what's your, this is something I just sort of have to answer with myself, but, um, like, like if I would do this blue, blue boy spread, which I still want to do, then I run into the risk of, you know, walking into the wholesaler and all these people saying, Hey, I saw you in blue boy or the, or the people I work with, you know, saying they saw me. Well, there's always that risk, but I still want to do it anyway, because I sort of feel, uh, committed to the committed to doing it as an expression of my independence and freedom. In other yeah. words, I want... Well, there's always, you know, yeah. you always want that license, but sometimes that license... 
has to be sacrificed. Yeah, it's you know, true. Just like with me, every book that I've ever done, uh, my name is on it. Mm-hmm. I never use a pseudonym for anything I ever do. Yeah. And, uh, uh, hell, I've done, I've gone up to Revlon with my book. I've worked for Revlon, Avon, and I've showed them books that make them blush. Mm-hmm. You know, but I've still done work for them. But uh, I've never been in pictures, as you know, the song goes. So I, right. I don't really know. That's a little different, uh, right? Yeah, I don't really know how somebody would react. I know my reaction would be nil. No, I wouldn't give a shit what the fuck anybody did on paper or in front of a camera. Uh, I always go right for the mind. You know, and the the energies that I get from somebody, and that's how I work with people. Um, Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit, uh, I I just don't know what their reaction would be, and it's kind of like, I don't really care to find out. Mm -hmm. But I really have no idea. Uh, There's a lot of double standards in this world, and just because Warner distributes William Playboy doesn't mean they'd want uh, their employees uh, acting as a model or actor in porn, but on well, the other hand, the only area that it does is when you start moving up the, the ladder. Mm-hmm. You know, having to gain credibility with other people that whose minds can't handle yeah right the, that kind of trip. You know, and then. All of a sudden, you find yourself you're out in left field because some fucking jerk off saw something ten or twelve years or five right. years ago or last yeah. week that maybe he's so uptight about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know right now it's holding me back in certain magazine work. Um, mm-hmm. I never did a gay book before. I always did straight books. I was art director for club for four years, club magazine. And uh, I worked for Penthouse. And any time I ever wanted to leave there, I was always able to go to a straight publication. But then to bring them something where, you know, you have a double page spread with a guy with his hand on his fucking cock and you say, hey, I, <laughs> you know, look how nice I cropped this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah they, they freak out. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I don't know how much longer I want my commitment to uh, to Blue Boy to be because of that. Yeah, I know what you mean. Hmm. It's uh, you know the gay trip is a whole different trip. Although I just read in today's today's Times is an incredible uh, article in the uh, magazine section about the uh, the potential of the market and uh, really well they always talk about the advertising market and how much gays make and they don't have families to spend it on and they spend it on themselves. They always talk about the gay buck. Mm-hmm. You know, and... Uh, yeah, I should, I should pick up that. But when it comes right down to the, you know, trying to get the advertiser in there, he uh, he doesn't want it. You know, he... Uh, at one time, Blue Boy had incredible uh, advertising. Incredible advertising. And I don't know what the hell ever happened. I really don't. Hmm. But, uh, you know, it's strange. But I love publishing. I think it's, I think it's a hell of a lot of fun. I always consider it a film. I always, I've always wanted to get into, into the film men. Yeah, I, I kind of feel I don't want to confine myself. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm committed to this, this new job I have and, and learning the, distribution business, the magazine distributing business, but at the same time, I want to try to round things out as much as possible and whenever I can in my spare time, Mm -hmm. learn something about film and video too, because especially since uh, so many people are talking about print on paper losing out to film and video. Well, I truly believe I, in in the fall, can you hold for just a second? Sure, by all means. Sunday's my cocaine day. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just <laughs> I take Sundays off. That's good. <laughs> I just uh, lay back and just that's what I just so that's what I just did. But I I thought when uh, uh, the major networks well it's 
let's go back 10 years ago when I first moved to New York and I thought, oh, Christ, they got 10, 15 stations. Look at this. Oh, this cable is fabulous, you know. Mm-hmm. I saw the potential and then it went nowhere. Yeah, that's true. And then it died. And then uh, just within the past year, you know, all of a sudden, uh, major networks now uh, have their cable stations. And they talk about cable putting out print. But there's a tremendous amount. You know, the media is media, and people are into print, and people are into into visual, into film. You know, uh, I don't think that cable will ever, or television or film will ever kill that which is on print. I mean, there's still that that visual eye that likes to see something still. Mm-hmm. That's the way I, I try to design my magazine. When I do a centerfold or something, I try to make it a still film. Mm-hmm. You know, the moves. When I, I, I did it, used to work high society. Mm-hmm. And even when I did club, when we would do our shootings, they would be like still films. They would take all day. We'd do a whole scenario shoot. We just wouldn't have a, a girl on the bed, you know, spreading her cunt. There would be a whole storyline of the whole thing, a purpose and a reason for it. And, uh,. I've always thought that with with my craft, I've always made pages move like people make, you know, film move. And uh, the video, I don't know. It's tough. New York, it's it's a different trip. I want to see what happens when it starts to hit Ohio. You know, there's going to be some real, when it starts going out into the Midwest and across the country and starts to get big, there's going to be some real stringent controls on on what the networks can show. You know, it's not going to be an open ball game anymore. It was for years in New York. Even now in New York, it's controlled. There's some only so much you can show. You know, Crazy George is off the air now. And, uh... Yeah, Yeah, sooner or later somebody steps in. And if you look... Oh, for sure they do. You know, because they're corporations. They're stockholders. And, and, uh... People who... The money that supports, that says, no, you cannot do this. If you you really... You know, I've been watching, reading the TV Guide like it's a novel. In the past month, if you noticed the, the the change in the programming on regular network, as opposed to uh, what's happening on the, and I'm talking ABC, NBC, CBS, what's happening on their networks on cable, uh, you don't even have movies anymore on on uh, on the regular television. Hmm. Everything is going to cable. The major uh, networks are competing with HBO and uh, the other three or four movie stations. And they're putting a lot more into it. I mean, that whole thing, that that old cable system is going to die. And it's just going to just, what we're going to end up with is uh, 48 stations of, uh, of major networks. And what we have now. And uh, that's not going to kill print. No. Yeah. What they put on there is, is still corporate, and they're still bucks, and they're still sponsors, and uh, you know you never be able to do what you can do in print on 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 uh, on film. You never will be able to. It'll never happen. Never happen. Well, I hope you're right. Sounds logical. No, I, I think I am. I've done a lot of thinking about it. I'm gonna. I am. I'm going to take some uh, some film courses this year, this uh, this uh, September. Where at uh, NYU? Yeah, I think that's a good place to go. I was thinking yeah, of that. Yeah, well, it's the best. Yeah, and because uh, <clears throat> I too want to get into film, I want to uh, I want to try and bring my eroticism into uh, commercial. Mm-hmm. Uh, Advertising kind of thing. You know, one step above what Calvin Klein, you know, Calvin Klein is very erotic with his advertising. Yes, absolutely. And uh, so is Chanel now. And 
I, I know absolutely nothing about film, and I, I think a quick, short course could show me how to make things move. Do you know which course you're going to take yet? No, I have to get a book, and I just know that's where I want to go because that is. They tell me, they tell me that is the best. Yeah, I, I've, I think it is. I've heard good things about it. And um, and they have an alternative media center too for cable. Right. Right. So that's what my fall has in store. Hmm. That's it. And as for the blue boy thing, yeah, I'd love to see you tie yourself up. <laughs> yeah, we got to do that then. <laughs> Yeah, I think. Well, so you you don't think? I mean, let's say the uh, circulation managers at those seven magazines. That at, you, at what? Uh, let's say the the each of the circulation managers at the seven magazines under your roof. At Blue Boy, yeah. Yeah, if they did something like that, what would the reaction be? If they decided to be in their own magazines tied up. <laughs> What would their what would the reaction be from the other people they work with or work for? Uh, in all honesty, yeah, I would truly believe that if let's just take uh, well, let's say I was head of circulation as a blue boy. Yes. Okay, and. Um, I was working with Larry Flint's staff. Right. I mean, those guys freak out over my ma over our magazine. <laughs> they do. <laughs> I mean, when they come to talk, uh -huh. and when they come to see what we want, you know, if we want to launch a one shot, yes, uh, they come in from California or the New York staff comes over, uh, and all of a sudden I walked into a room, and. Uh, say this straight dude recognized me as being in the magazine four months ago. Right. I think in my negotiating power with him to sell what I want to sell within my magazine, uh, I think my credibility would be completely lost. I think the guy would be totally freaked out. Wow. <clears throat> but I think you're young enough uh, I, you know, I, I, you know, and you're just starting out that, uh, hell, what happens today is not going to be remembered next year, you know. Yeah, that's true. Especially People are too busy, sign, most Especially if you sign a release that says, you know, this is a one-shot trip. It's all in the release, you know. This is a one-shot trip, and it's not to be repeated, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, this way, we don't take the film and it can't be sold to another magazine, or there's no one shot that can be made out of it. Uh, there are ways to protect yourself. Is you that know, what the release know. says, the one you have? My release? Yeah. Well, there are always comments. There are always areas that, um, uh, on any release, yeah. can be altered. You know, we have a standard release that says Blue Boy holds all rights to publish in all its publications these photographs. Uh, we don't sell photographs to other magazines. Uh, it does become the property of Blue Boy, however. So say tomorrow, the corporation changes hands, mm -hmm. you know. And it ends up with the Navidi group. Mm -hmm. And then they happen to like your photographs. You know, uh, then they're published again. What you do is you sign a one-time right, mm -hmm. and that's it, you know. Uh, you, you know, you just, uh, there are ways of altering. I mean, you leave yourself, you, you work out your contract. The release is just like a contract. You have to read it. I always tell people when they get in, in front of a camera, I say, man, don't do anything in front of this camera that you, first of all, don't want printed, and don't sign that release if you don't have any questions. If you have, if you have any questions, answer, and don't sign it if you don't like what you read, you know? 
And uh, that way it protects me against later aggravation. It protects the, the model, you know. And then everybody has fun doing what they do. So it's good. So who are the people from Flint that you see? Do you see uh, Mike Parker or... I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't talk to the. Uh, yeah, that's right. You don't take care of them. I stay away completely from circulation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. I don't right. know that I could even handle those guys. I, I. I. I was involved with one. With one meeting, they didn't like a book I put out. They thought it was too hard. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, they couldn't even look at it. <laughs> I mean, uh, they, that's that's the sounding. Well, I guess it kept, makes sense. They just though. kept it closed. You know, they knew that they were there for a reason. Evidently, they had looked at it in private, but uh, uh, yeah, well, it was a very uptight situation. <laughs> situation. I suppose, and uh, with just cause. I mean, they're out to make bucks too, and if they send the book out to a wholesaler, mm -hmm. and the wholesaler's uptight, he's not going to put it on the stands. You know, right? And uh, they, then they then they don't make the money. They don't even take it out of the fucking box. They'll leave it in the box and they'll ship it back a month later, and say, "Here's your returns." Yeah. You know, so in that respect, I do get involved in circulation because I know what I know to what limits I can take it. Otherwise, I'd be no good at my job. My magazine would die. Nobody would handle it. You know, it can't get too hot to handle, so to speak. <laughs> that kind of thing. Mm hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, well, I guess most of those people who work for Flint's company are just uh, full uh, executive types. They are. Yeah. I mean, they're not into, they're not dirt boys. They're not into, into, a, they probably don't even read their own magazines. No, most of them you know, don't, no. They're distributing, first of all, Hustler. Right. Uh, I don't even know whether Sheik is still on the market or not, but uh, I haven't seen that book in a long time. But, uh, you know, they have to push that, too. But, I mean, they're a... A lot of guys, I say straight, I'm not talking about sexual preference, I'm talking about minds. Yeah, I know what you mean. That, uh, you know, get freaked out by this, but it's the way they make their buck. Mm-hmm. You know, so they go after it. Yeah, so I had an interview with Flint, too, uh, actually quite a while ago, back in October. At the West Coast or here in New York? Uh, here at the New York uh, office. But the person who interviewed me was Mike Parker. He's in charge of the account executives. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the position was for an account executive position. Mm -hmm. So who knows? It may have even been possible if I had gotten that, that I would have ended up handling uh, the Blue Boy account. You never know. Yeah, no, you never know. You never know at all. But... Uh, that didn't come through because they hired someone with more, uh, well, Flint was the only company that came close to hiring me directly into client relations. Every other distributor said their business is too unique. They hire people from the field first. They hire people who've been involved with doing what I'm doing now for Warner. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, well, you got to, you know, that's the most important because you got to get out there. You got to know how to handle those distributors. Absolutely. In that's fact, the most important part of circulation that's that's all that's exactly what circulation is in fact i was wondering if if flynn was making a mistake to consider hiring people directly into client relations that don't have that background first mm -hmm. but anyway that came to pass so well i think with the flint thing i always thought the flint was more into into money than he was into circulation uh-huh wouldn't doubt it you know and because, uh, you know, I see what it's, how it is to get our front money from Flint. And, uh, and I always thought that he was more, that, the, the, that they were more into the financial end, more so than a client relationship, distribution relationship, and that whole thing. Because I think they are probably the biggest at this point. Biggest in what terms? They carry the most magazines. You know, I just, with, with as many titles as they have, Jesus Christ, I mean... Uh, but they're not necessarily the best-selling titles, though. No, they're yeah. not, but uh, money-wise, you know, right now I'm talking money. Mm-hmm. 
So you think that has a reason why? I mean, that's kind of a reason why they. I would think that were apt to hire to me directly it. into client relations. Yeah, I yeah. would think that would have a lot to do with it. Mm-hmm. Well, I may still do that, possibly. Yeah, but I think Warner is a, is a great step for you. It's really good. When did that start? A month ago. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah, a month ago. I've been doing it for a month now. Uh-huh. And you're just doing what, New York? My territory is Queens. Mm-hmm. I do Queens. Mm-hmm. And each morning I report to uh, a wholesaler in Melville, Imperial News. Yeah. So I report there each morning. And there's a little publisher's room where there's a bunch of people from all the different distributors. Right. And that's how I found out what was happening with Blue Boy and Flint. I heard that gossip because there was a bunch of Flint people working there, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, as well as all of the others. Yeah. Well, we're, we are back, I believe, with Flint. As of last week, I think the, uh, the thing was settled. That's good. And I think it had everything to do with... Um, like I said, Cable wanted, uh, uh, actually, they wanted censorship. Right, yeah, right. Flint is a little bit more daring, I guess, or? I would that, say so. Yeah. <laughs> is mean, that the right way to describe it? Stretch it from one end of the room to the other. Of course, they're, <laughs> they're more daring, you know. It, uh, you know. If you just look at the titles that they handle. Hmm. I think cable news has a lot uh, more, um, a lot more, a lot less sophisticate, sophisticated titles than uh, than Flint. I don't even know what cable distributes. It High society is the only thing I know. Uh, is ca- uh, cable? Well, they used to be with Warner, I think, at one time. Well, years and years, and years yeah, ago when I worked with them. Yeah, certainly not now. No, certainly not now. Mm-hmm. Um, and club, I think, is cable too. I think could be, could be. They probably were doing uh, Warner too. I don't know. You know, I was just thinking back to what we were just talking about. Um, now, there's no way I'll spread. The, you know, there's no way I'll let anyone find out on purpose that I'm a porn actor with people in this business mm-hmm. I'm in. But if they found out accidentally, I was just thinking. Uh, Maybe, possibly, a company like Flint would not be too opposed to it. Uh, maybe, well, they, maybe they would think of it as a good... Um, I mean, just based on what you were talking about. With, because of their titles. Yeah, because of their titles. An asset. Yeah, it would be more of an asset if I was working for Flint and dealing with your circulation managers. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just like uh, with High Society with Gloria Leonard. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's when I was when I was doing High Society, she was uh, in essence the publisher mm-hmm. in 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 title only, and um, God, I I forget who the hell I think it was Warner that was distributing then, and then yeah, I don't know anything about that. But I I mean, the chick was was she was dynamite in the field. Everybody loved her. I mean. They knew she knew what she was doing. She was into into the knowledge of the, of the whole thing, and she could talk that kind of magazine talk with them, you know. And uh, she was definitely an asset. That's good. <clears throat> well, I hope I can find some kind of niche like that. Although I don't have, I guess like like Gloria Leonard has the advantage of having the the market value herself. I mean, she contributes to um, her own image. Right, exactly. She's a marketable thing. Yes, they they market her as well as they market the magazine. Right. Which, you know, I wouldn't have that same kind of opportunity as she would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a whole totally different trip. Yeah. Totally different. But it's sure enough uh, interesting. (laughs) Yeah, no, I wanted to find out what Warner's feelings were on adult titles without without um, letting the cat out of the bag or, or, you know, raising questions. In other words, uh, I was talking to someone in the home office in Rockefeller Center, 
And he just happened to mention in our conversation, he was talking the business because he likes to sort of ramble on about it just mm -hmm. like you and I. And he just happened to mention something about, you know, not carrying any more adult titles. And I said, oh, why is that? Because I wanted to get to the bottom of it quickly without making a big to-do right. of it. And he yeah. explained it was the contract with Playboy, mm -hmm. you know, which limits us to just one more title. So I found out pretty quickly then that we won't get be getting more involved with, with adult titles or sophisticated titles. But um, got Mad Magazine and National Lampoon and Heavy Metal and DC Comics. Do they do those also? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do all of those. And family circle in the supermarkets. Yeah, then you get into that whole that whole area. That's 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 where it would hurt you, you know. If you had to right. kind of talk to the guy that does circulations for family circle. Right. Yes. And the night before, he he just happened to you know somebody flashed a blue boy in front. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. You were working your way up, and you maybe even on his level. Right. You know, it it could be. Uh, you know, it could hurt. Yeah, I've thought of that. I've yeah. often hoped that it it would never happen, you know, to anybody, but uh, it does. I mean, there are those those fucking rednecks out there, those fucking those freaks that. Uh... You know, it's really funny too, because uh, as I said, I, I work in this little publisher's room in Imperial News, and uh, uh, one thing that one benefit of working for these distributors is you if you usually get a lot of free magazines from the company you work for in the mail so i was hoping to i mean what i want to do is well a lot of them just throw them away right so i i wanted to get this flint person who just throws his away to save them for me. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, again, didn't want to make a big to-do about it or, or, you know, raise a lot of curiosity as to why I want to save copies of all of Flint's magazines, you know? But right. it's mostly because I'm interested in them editorially. Right. Because I might try writing for them and so forth. Exactly. And uh, uh, the, one of the persons I was working for, you know, I mentioned... Uh, well, there was a sign which says no no magazine swapping, and I was asking one of the persons at Warner what that meant, and I said, suppose I wanted to get a copy of uh, Hustler from uh, from the Flint person over there or something, and he said, it makes me laugh, he says, well, you don't seem to be the type of person <laughs> interested in that. <laughs> so my image, especially when I have my eyeglasses on, I just seem to convey yeah. this... Well, I think what the, what they mean by that is, you know, like before a magazine comes out, you know, when it comes off press, mm -hmm. there's a lot of swapping that goes around. Who gets a hold of whose cover? You know, you'll get an advanced copy that, uh, you know, from a friend from another dist uh, d uh, distribution house. Yeah, and uh, you'll see what the hell they're coming out with. You know that kind of thing, right? Yeah, I, I think that's what uh, at least that's what that term to me would mean. Yeah, like yeah. trying to get a hold of a mandate before it hit the stands to see what their cover was, so that I could get a jump on their on their cover. Right. Yeah, you're probably right about that. What I was thinking, the point I was trying to make was what was, what was it was funny the way he said you didn't that I didn't seem like the <laughs> kind of person interested in Hustler magazine. You know, and I said to myself, boy, do I have you fooled. <laughs> you know, I mean, what would he say if he knew, you know? <laughs> because I really come across as being very straight. How many films have you made? Oh, like 25 or 30. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, I was just, I just worked for Radley Metzger recently. Mm -hmm. Um... So, but I'm not too worried about that. I mean, it could ha anything could happen, but I don't. These people don't uh, tend to. Not only don't tend to go to the theaters to see the movies, but they don't tend to uh, collect adult video cassettes either. Oh yeah, no, I, I, I uh, people in publishing, they're, they're so involved and so concerned about what the fuck is happening day to day in publishing that they don't even have time to eat dinner. Right. So <laughs> you know? So I'm not concerned about that. It's 
being in Blue Boy is a different story since since uh, the Flint guy in the same office is going to get a copy in his mailbox. Which he will. Yeah. yeah. Sure. But he may not even look at it either, you know, most likely. Yeah, we'll throw a bag over your face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not worried about it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I want to take the risk and see what happens. Well, that's, that's your choice. But like I said, yeah, I'd love to do it because I'd get off. First of all, I would get off on it. Well, maybe something could be done with makeup to make me look a little different. I don't know. That's a thought. Lighting. Everything. I mean, there's many ways in photography to uh, to change. See, for one thing, I always wear glasses mm-hmm. at my job. So that's a start. I won't have glasses on. And there may, might be some other things. Were you thinking of uh, a cover feature? Were you thinking of putting me on the cover? No, no, not at all. It would just be an inside feature. Yeah. So that, yeah, I, so that's good. I mean, I'd actually like to be on the cover, but it may not be too practical to be on the cover. Be, you know, it would be pretty risky. <laughs> really? Yeah, then I think you'd, you're taking a big risk. Yeah. Well, as soon as I get my financial problems straightened out and I can afford more contributors, <laughs> which I don't think will be too long. I mean, we're we're working hard on it and we're trying to clear up our back debts. Yeah. And, uh, then I can go on and, and uh, I'll have a budget once more to work with because it's expensive, to, to, you know, to do something like that. Sure, sure. Are we still talking about the same price? Or? Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right, babe. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad about your new career. Good. Go at it. We should uh, do some more chatting sometime. Hey, anytime. Over, yeah, over uh, a bar or something. I'd love, yeah, I'd love it. Anytime you want, just pick up the phone, you know. Well, maybe what I'll do is if I'm in your neighborhood. I'm not in Manhattan too much, mm-hmm. but if I'm in your neighborhood, I'll see if you're around. Sure. You got the number. Yeah. Okay, then. Good. Be good. You too. Bye. Bye.